Hi, it's Todd of Todd Stuff here, and today we're going to have a look at making a Colletier de Charovine crossbow. So, uh, basically there's a lake in France, down near Lyon, um, where there was a settlement about a thousand years ago um, that was then excavated um, in the not-too-distant past, and they found the remains of a crossbow. It's uh, a very light bow, it's probably a hunting bow, almost certainly not a war bow. Um, we don't have any war, bows, uh, war crossbows going back that far. Um, there's another one, a rising peg system from Skane in Scandinavia. Um, that is also very simple, about the same time, I believe. Um, and then there is the Colletier de Charovine bow. Um, what's notable about it is it has three components. Uh, four if you include the string. Um, so it's a very simple bow to make, very backwards. Um, so it's it's a light hunting bow, maybe used for fishing, maybe used for birding, um, we don't know. But we're going to start by making the bow. So whenever you make a crossbow, the absolute first start has to be making the bow itself because that tells you what the brace height on the bow is going to be and what the draw length is going to be. So if you start with the stock, then you really limit yourself about what you can do with the bow itself. So, uh, And that makes life more difficult because the stock is the easy bit to make if you like. So um, we're going to start with the bow. And I have here uh, a piece of ash, and it's actually an old handrail. Um, so it'll be very suitable, but if we have a look on here, we have to work with the um, growth rings of the bow itself. So you can see here that the growth rings are slightly inconveniently not parallel with the side of the handrail. Uh, so we have to take out a piece of wood, roughly here, and we can start to work that down going to keep it flat on the back, most crossbow prods were flat. Um, it also makes it easier to make a bow. If you A D-section bow is always harder to make and in fact it works very well. I mean the Native American Indians basically stuck with various flat bow designs. Um, the Nidan bow from, that the Vikings used um, from Scandinavia again, a flat bow as far as I know. Um, so it's, it, it's an established form. It's just when you think longbow, a longbow is D-section, but this is not, of course, a longbow. What is also notable about this bit of wood here is that the grain runs straight. That means that I can work it very easily. There's no sort of kinks where bows came out. Um, uh, there's no warpage in it. I'll be able to get a good piece of timber out of this, albeit just an ordinary bit of ash handrail. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, cut it down. So I'm going to use a bandsaw now for just cropping this out. Um, you could do this with a plane um, or even hand saws, it's just this is going to be faster for us. So now we've got our, our billet of timber. Um, you can see running up here the grain on the side, so it's nice and straight, it's within the boundary of the, of the billet itself. There is a flaw here uh, that I'm going to watch out for, so I'm going to try and work that out. Um, it's, it's basically, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little void in the wood. Um, what is deeper within the wood through there, I don't know. So we've got to watch out for that. We've now got our billet sitting in the vise, and uh, this is the back of the bow, so this is the bit that's going to be facing the um, quarry that you're shooting at. And I've got to get this down now to a single growth ring from each tip to tip. So it's going to change this front angle a bit and then we're going to redress it again on the bandsaw. So I'm just going to go with a, a plane now. One thing you will find with ash is that it tears quite easily. So it likes being worked in one direction and not so much in the other. So it's a bit of a laborious process. I'll just show you here. 
So I'm not sure how much you can tell, but you can see there are different colours here. So the lighter one is the actual good wood, and the darker one here is the sort of the pithy wood. I'm, I'm not sure if that's like spring growth or winter growth or whatever. Uh, but I've still got another layer. I'm going to take another growth ring, complete growth ring, off this billet. And then we should be more or less full width of the billet. Okay, so we've got our billet thinned down now. Um, it's got one continuous growth ring on the front all the way to just about here, where the grain just dips down slightly actually. So I'm going to work with the grain now and take a spoke shave and dig into that a little bit to try and get back a continuous uh, growth ring if I can. Uh, so just here is really the important bit. Um, so we're going to do that now and then we will taper it into more of a bow section. Oh, uh, what I would say before we go is there is a flaw in the wood here. In a flat bow, this is not so important. Were this a long bow, this would fail. You'd get an elbow there, it would, a hinge, whatever you want to call it. It would snap, ultimately. Should be okay on a flat bow. I'm just going to, if you can see on the end here, it's a sort of a trapezoid, it's not square. So I'm just going to uh, trim this square on the saw, just so I've got a reference point and then we will measure out and do another saw cut. So, first thing is find the centre of the bow. And it is 99 centimetres. Now, I'm not worried about measuring this too accurately because I'm going to cut this on a saw for the sake of speed. But you cannot make a bow and just put it on a saw and call it done. You have to tiller it. We'll come to that process next. So the fact that this is just a little bit approximate at this stage really doesn't matter because the finished bow will be definitely two different dimensions on each side simply because the wood flexes differently. So this piece of wood will bend in one way, this piece of wood will bend in a slightly different way. Uh, so I'm just going to saw it now for speed and then clean it up on the plane. So what I'm doing now, I'm just sort of finally chasing down that growth ring uh, just to make it short, make sure that I've got it uh, as good as I can. The timber obviously moves slightly so you've got to work with it. I find a spoke shave at this point is better because you can move it with the grain of the wood and as you see that you've got to dip down here and then swoop back out then it allows you to do that. So basically you can see from this it's kind of flat and kind of rectangular but actually it does bend slightly uh, and that's because I'm having to work with the wood. This is not a piece of MDF, it's not a piece of chipboard and if you excuse the pun it will not bend to my will. I have to work with the bow itself, uh, with the wood itself. So um, there is some slight lack of straightness, but the idea is that when you draw it into a bow, that will go, you won't see it. Right, so we're going to start tillering the bow now. So basically, I've cut the tapers in this way and this way, um, and planed them flat. Uh, I've also just thinned the tips slightly, but on the belly of the bow, the inside of the bow, the bit that faces you. Um, and there you can cut through the growth rings. Uh, it's on the front that you want to try and avoid that if you can. So, first thing I'm doing really is just popping it in the vise here, just getting a feel for how how it's looking like it's flexing. So, um, at the moment, you know, it's okay. I can start to put it on what's called a tiller, uh, tiller stick. I'll show you that now. And we will get 
uh, an idea of the beginning of the bend. And then from there on in, there's no measurement, there's no drawing. You just look at the bend uh, and you adjust the wood accordingly. So I'm just going to cut the knocks in now so I can put a string on it. So I've just cut some simple knocks in now and I'm going to put a string on it which is slack. I'm not going to brace the bow at this point. So I can see from that we're beginning to get something like a bow. So this device here is just a tillering stick. All it is is something to put the bow into at the top and some pegs at a known distance. So I can pull the string back uh, and measure the distance that the bow comes back. But what is really important is this allows me to step back a little bit from the bow and to have a look at it and to have a look at the curvature of the bow. So what I do is I just put a little bit of brace height on it and I look how it's bending. Now, I don't know if you can see it there, but this limb actually is bending in a fairly nice curve. This one comes around in a curve and then this portion here is barely bending at all. So I'm just going to mark it now and so that I know what I'm doing. I'm just going to take away some wood in this area here, but on the belly of the bow, always on the belly of the bow or the sides, never on the front now. Uh, so I'm just going to take it down and skim a little bit of wood and this is just a very repetitive process, a little bit at a time and then once you're confident you can pull it down to the next step and again at the next step you adjust the curve again and you just do this until you get to the draw weight that you want. Uh, now the bow as it stands now, it feels quite stiff obviously as you'd expect but I'm getting flex here, but actually not so much on both these parts. So I'm just going to thin the limbs down a little bit, all the way to the tips. So we've got it on the tiller now on a slack string. Uh, nice curve on that arm. A little less nice here, a bit of a hinge point. But next thing is just to relieve a bit of wood here because that's remaining very stiff. Uh, so I'm just going to take that section down a little bit in thickness. So all I'm doing now is just flexing it a bit, going towards the next point that I'm going to knock it onto. Uh, just helps to sort of train the wood up a bit rather than just going straight into it. It's also quite cold here and it helps to warm the wood, which does no harm. Yeah, so we've got a nice curve on this side. This side just a little bit stiff. Uh, so I'm just going to take a little bit more wood away this side, probably from about there coming through, I think. So we put a, a shorter string on the bow now, so we've got a brace height. Uh, just going to put some scales on it. And it's not a very powerful bow, but that is what happens when you want to do it in a hurry and make sure that it works. So we're coming in at about 30 pounds, a little bit more, 32, 34, something like that. Um, so nice. Lightweight little bow, should make it easy and fun to shoot. So now I'm just filing the knocks in. Before they were a little light, they were just for, for working the bow. So now I'm putting them in properly. Putting them in at a slight angle helps with seating the string. And then of course the same on the other side. So we're going to make a string now for, for the bow. Uh, we're going to do a very simple one, shouldn't take us too long. Um, there's many ways you can do it, but the, we're doing this in three parts to give reinforced ends. And I'll show you what I mean by that as we get to it. So I'm just looping round and round now to make a very simple uh, bundle of cords. Um, this is a linen thread, takes about 50 pounds, 22 kilos in draw weight. So we're not going to need too many of them, and the thicker your bowstring, uh, the more energy it takes out of the bow. So you don't want it too thick, but you don't want it very thin. A modern Dacron string, for instance, um, 
basically, it's it's too thin often to sit well on the back of the bow, uh, on the back of the bolt, so it doesn't shoot cleanly. So you want a little bit of fatness to your string. It's just going to put a knot in it, a very simple knot, just to hold the cords. So you can now take this skein of cords off, just to keep it bundled up. In medieval days, you'd whip it. I don't think they did. So I'm just turning it inside and out a few times just so that it holds itself together nicely. Okay, so now we're going to build some loops that go on the ends of the string and they get twisted in. So we'll just lay this skein onto one side, just trying to keep it uh, reasonably neat. So now we're just going to make the end loops. So I'm going to put in 14 uh, because that is the same number as in the main string. Four, five, six. Okay. So the thread is a, a linen thread with a breaking strain of about 50 pounds, 22 kilos, so there'll be absolutely plenty here. But you don't want your string to be too thin, otherwise it doesn't engage with the back of the bolt very well. Uh, too thick, of course, and you're losing a lot of the energy of the bow into driving the string, because it weighs quite a lot. So it's a very simple thing now. We've got our two loops and we just pull the centre of that loop through so it just forms a knot on the end of the string. Do the same at the other end. So we'll do the same on the other end. So you just pop it through and just pull the bundle through like that. So we've now got a string. Now, as you can see, some of these uh, are a little bit flappy. We want to get the tension the same on all of them. So I'm just going to back that loop off again on both sides. Just give it a little, a little movement. And now you can see all the cords have gone tight. So we're going to pull it up. Same again on the other side. And that way, the same load is on all of the string, all of the cords. So we'll just check that for size now. It should be a little smaller than the bow to account for brace height. So it is, in fact, a tiny bit smaller. And we will put some twisting into it, which helps keep the cords together and gets it to the right size. So we'll put a couple of sort of inside out twists on the end loops. That will also help to hold everything together. Also, the twisting action shortens the string slightly, which is what we want, so that you get a good brace height on your bow. And then what we'll do now is just give it a little twist. I'm just spinning it around my finger there. Um, and that now should be, give or take, about the right sizes for the bow. And we can always uh, increase or decrease the length of the string by adding or taking away twists. <clears throat> So now I've got to serve the ends of the string. So basically what that means is just whipping some cord round and round it uh, so it all holds together and it sits in the knocks nicely. So just doing two pieces at once just makes it a bit faster. Generally you would probably whip all the way but for the sake of this I'll just show you how to do the ends. I'm just going to find the centre of the string. So two chords again. Going to start on one end and then wind it away. Okay. 
and here is our finished string. Uh, so later on I'll give it a coat of wax. But let's just see if it fits the bow. So at the moment it is almost exactly the right size um, when the bow is slack. But of course we want to brace it, so we're just going to pop some twists into it. And we're looking for about uh, 80 millimeter, three inch brace height, something like that. A little bit more. Eighty-five millimeter brace height. Okay. So we've got the string uh, uh, on the bow, brace height. So we're just going to draw it back down. So that's probably where we'll run it. Maybe a little more. We've got enough in the bow. So it's about eleven and a half inch power stroke, something like that. So coming down. So twenty-eight centimeter, twenty-nine centimeter, eleven and a half inches. We'll run the bow at that. So now we're going to take our bow and fit it to a stock. So the first thing to do is find the center line on the bow and then mark the width of that on the stock here. You want a little bit of depth there uh, and then you put an angle in, maybe about 10 degrees or so. Um, so that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to cut that in, position the bow and then we can get the brace height on the bow and mark it from there. So I've now cut the socket for the bow uh, with a slight angle on it. I'm just going to pop it all in, brace the bow and make sure that all sits well. So now we've got the bow into the stock. Uh, the string is sitting on top of the stock very nicely, the angle looks good. So I'm now going to mark the brace height of it. So that's the brace height of the bow and the string at full draw is going to be 11 and a half inches back from that, about 28 centimeters from there. So I'm just going to measure and mark that distance. So it's that point that the string is going to be pulled back to. We're now going to build in the very particular shape of the Colottier de Charavin bow. So we're going to bring that line back. This part here, you just want a slight return on it. That is where the string, uh, the cord that locks the bow into place sits. So we've got that line now. Uh, and we're going to start to um, get the string notch in as well. So I've just marked the position of that and we'll actually drill that down now and cut through that so that uh, that can be our next step and we make sure that that works fine. So I've just drilled through for the, the trigger notch here, so we'll cut down with a the saw there and file it up and make sure that the bow and the string seats properly. So just going to saw through the trigger notch. So we're through there and I'm going to take my trusty file and just move it a little so we should get our bow on the front 
and that should now just draw back and into the notch. So the next step now is just to cut away the bits that we don't want to give the, the bow that uh, very distinctive look of the you know, Colatier de um, Cherubine bow. So now we've got the very distinctive shape um, and we've got to get the trigger in there. So the trigger is actually just like a, a bent piece of wood that just pivots around a hole here and pushes the string out of the notch. Now you could cut it out of any bit of grain wood, um, ash wood is good, boxwood is good, they're very tough. But I've actually got a bit of boxwood here with a natural bend in it. Um, so that's going to help us strength wise. So I'm going to actually use the, the curve of this wood so that the grain is kept true. So I'm just going to cut this down now and that is actually going to end up being our trigger here. Uh, so now we've obviously got a, a somewhat bent and horrible looking bit of wood. So I'm just going to flat this off on a sander. Easiest way for you to do it would be to file it if you haven't got a sander. Back in a moment. So here we have the trigger and it's working with the grain of the wood there because of that branch so it'll be nice and tough. So we have a pivot hole here and we're going to drill one into there and it's going to sit there, push up. So the next step now is to cut down a groove for the trigger to sit into. So I'm just going to pop it centrally, not using any measuring tools because of course our thousand year old compatriots didn't have verniers. And I'm just going to cut a tiny little bit out in front of the notch as well just to make sure that that will seat properly under it. So We'll just drill down. We can always make it deeper if it's not deep enough. So we'll drill down now. Right, so let's start to clean that. Popping the trigger into position, just using a drill bit as a pivot. So that looks like it is going to work perfectly. So now we're the next thing we're going to test the bow uh, actually with the trigger system. But this corner here of the notch is very very sharp, so obviously we don't want that. We want this whole area to be sort of polished and waxed and nice. So I'm just going to smooth that off a little bit. So just putting a bit of a radius on it, same on the other side, and then we will run a little bit of sandpaper in there just to smooth it all up and make it loveliness. Uh, of course our thousand year old cousins were short of sandpaper, but they did use shark skin. So just going to smooth this down actually with a bit of paper. And then what we'll do is we'll run a bit of beeswax into here before we shoot it for proper, just to you know, make sure everything's looked after. We don't want it to wear the string 
too quickly. So it looks like it's going to work. Let's all cross our fingers, eh? So draw it back into position. That's good, it's nice and secure. I'm just going to push down on the trigger now. That's it. So as far as I can tell, except for the groove on top, that's now going to be a working bow. So let's cut the groove. So we've now got a central groove and I'm just going to run a chisel down it to start. Um, and they certainly used wooden scrapers, or scrapers for doing wood and, and even metal as well. So very often fullers in sword blades and saxes, the Vikings used to do it a lot, uh, are actually scraped in rather than of course grounding, which is what we would do these days. So the scraper tool, it's just in this case a 12mm bit of steel bar with a sharp edge on it, uh, not blade sharp. Um, and because of the length of it, it tends a bit like a plane to straighten itself out. So the fact that the cut was not quite straight actually doesn't really matter because just like you can saw cut a bit of wood and plane it, it will find its own straight line. So now we have a workable groove all the way down. So we now have the working pieces of the bow. We've got the bow and the string, we've got the trigger, the stock with the bolt groove. So now really we just got to sand the thing down, smooth it, uh, and then we'll start to assemble. One thing to note is you've got a sharp corner up here. Again, that's going to wear the string. So we just want a bit of a curve on the top here. Um, and then the rest of it, you just curve it to make it comfortable to hold. One thin wooden peg. It doesn't matter that it's thin because it takes barely any load at all. Uh, and the trigger. So we're in. So our peg is in, our trigger works, and we'll just glue the peg, cut and glue it, and we're done on the bow. So the last piece in all of this is to put the binding on to hold the bow. So it's a simple one. Just hook that around, feed it through, and then you've got to splice it the right length. Now anybody who splices ropes is going to know that splicing exactly the right length is going to be difficult. So we splice it basically the right length, and then if we need to pack this bow out we can just put pieces of very thin leather behind it just to get it to the right kind of tightness. So that is where we're going to splice it. I think to be honest, Go and have a look on YouTube if you want to see how to splice ropes. It's probably going to be the easiest thing. Because um, this is about bows, not about splicing ropes. So we're going to put the bow on now uh, with the bridle. So I've um, spliced it in. So just put it through the bow. Pop the bow into position. Pull it around tight. I want it to be fairly tight and there we go. And we're on. So the bow is now in position and ready to shoot. So let's go. So we have the bow. Everything's assembled, so it's time to shoot. So you just span it by hand, draw it back. Putting the bolt in the groove. Just there. And we shoot. So you've got to be careful not to get the butt of the bolt over the top of the trigger peg, otherwise it just clips it out of the way. But, you know, shoots nicely. <laughs>